We've come to the end of E.T. Week. <laughs> Thank fucking God! At this point, I really don't fucking care. I've seen enough Turkish aliens, double peanut ETs, and Nuki to want to blast off to my own planet where no humans' interpretations of extraterrestrials can ever hurt me again. So what do we have here? Extraterrestrial visitors? Not the most original title in the world, but then again, these aren't the most original movies in the world. Now there's a face that can draw in viewers. I've never seen someone's last known photograph be on a box cover. Let's open this bad boy up. Jesus! This box is falling apart before the movie is. If I trip and this thing pierces my artery, would the box have technically done me a favor? Let's get this last movie over with. <laughs> I just don't want to spend a night out in this crap for nothing. For Christ's sake, will you keep your voices down? There's ranges around here. On a night like this? You're naughty, Trumpy. Very naughty. Oh my god. It's fucking pod people. Yeah, it's, it's pod people, all right. That's little Tommy from the movie. They just bleached out his skin to trick my ass. This is going to feel really weird. Mystery Science Theater 3000 is my favorite show of all time. Pod People is my favorite episode of the show. After Joel and the bots have masterfully riffed their way through the entire movie, is there really any point to me doing it? Not really, honestly, but I'm not riffing pod people per se. I'm riffing extraterrestrial visitors. Plus, I do reference pod people enough times on this show. You provide the pus on pod people's carcass. So you're more than welcome to assume that the P stands for pod people. Cut to the fucking music. <laughs> So if you haven't seen the MST3K episode, please stop this video and go watch it. And if you feel there's something else that could be said about the movie, then come back and watch my episode. It's interesting at first seeing the non-Film Ventures edition of the movie, mainly because we can actually see the movie's real opening credits. But I guess shit is shit no matter how it's introduced. In this version, we see that the flying meteor was caused by a random space explosion, sending the meteor flying towards Earth and surrounded by opening credits. Doesn't feel the same without the clips of Galaxy Invader jammed in there. Ian Sarah is our top build actor. I was hoping it'd be someone with balls. When there's no silhouette on the bottom of the screen, it adds 30% more fog to the movie, and I still can't tell what's going on. Plus, the dialogue seems even more repetitive when there's no one talking over it. You sure this is the place? Sure, I'm sure. But I think I'm sure. I told you that schmuck knew Sweet F.A. about Sweet F.A. These three are a trio of egg poachers who were very busy setting up pre-production work on Grizzly 2. It's okay if I say that title, right? All throughout this, it cuts back and forth to a POV shot of the looming meteor. At this rate, it'll crash into the Earth in 2018. Though it must be close enough that it wakes up little Danny Bonaducci. Hey, no. That meowing in the background is gonna get annoying when he tries doing a vlog. Lucky bastard, I wish my telescope picked up Doctor Who episodes. There was no bolt of lightning, I tell you, something crashed back there. Isn't it obvious? Something knocked over the fog machine. The poachers are having some trouble finding the eggs, but one of them has found the basement from the Amityville Horror. Should have been back by now, though. Hey, what if the son of a bitch has run out of And taken the truck, too. Say, the words aren't bleeped in this version. It's pod people after dark. Or... 
day for night. We see more of the crash site in this copy, such as the woods being on fire. Luckily, the smoke will blend right in. I don't know what kind of meteor crashed here, but apparently it had genital warts. Hey, don't shoot them. It's not their fault the movie sucks. I joke, but this movie's a masterpiece compared to Nuki. Just goes to show you that an E.T. ripoff can spice things up when it adds death scenes. I tell you, there's something weird going on. I agree. Where'd all the fog go? Thank God we're back to little Tommy. I was worried that the movie wasn't cute enough. To me, it's a centipede. It's always been called a centipede. Yeah, welcome to 2011, where the word centipede takes on a whole new set of connotations. Just up, awesome. <laughs> yep, that still feels out of place, even when you're watching it on Rift. Hey, what'd you cut away for? This is no time to spy on the production team from The Geek. We got a musical number to finish. Hey, Remember in Boogie Nights when Dirk Diggler tried becoming a singer? This isn't quite that bad, but it needs more cocaine. With any luck, this group could give Jesse and the Rippers a run for their money. It stinks. You know, I frequently wondered what he actually said there. I can't read lips, but he's definitely saying something that's not the words, it stinks. Maybe an F-bomb slipped through from when this used to be a horror film. I take it it's somebody's birthday. Why else is the Burnett gift wrapped? In the non-MST3K version, we get to witness the graceful scene of Pat Benatar asking out a Ken doll. Don't call us, we'll call you. So long, Superstead. Huh. Bitchier even than I am. How dare the MST3K version rob us of that line delivery. I'm glad I'm watching this movie uncut. It really lacks something when you can't hear characters calling each other a bitch. Sharon! What's got into that bitch? This guy is smiling now, but he's yet to have his face exploded by slugs. What should I do? It's getting late. I'm feeling blue. Damn, I figured the B-side to hear the engines roll now would be Shine Your Love, but it's much worse than that. Sarah. You call me and tell me you love me. <laughs> this music makes me miss the subtlety of Inky Dinky Doodah Morning. You guys really don't want to go in these woods. There's aliens lurking about who will come on your forehead. I guess this music isn't too bad in an Adventures of Lolo sort of way. The lead singer, Rick, brings along one of his bang maids and just hopes that it won't get awkward with his girlfriend. You know, we have been very hard on her. Yes, you've been very hard on the airhead you didn't want on the trip and who was trying to break up your friend's relationship. The poachers stumble upon her and try to grab her for some reason. Are they kidnappers now? <coughs> oh, I see. It's so she would fall off of a cliff. At least she was given last rites by an Ewok. Things could get kind of tricky now. This place is going to be swarming with rangers soon. Well, maybe you shouldn't have tried abducting that girl. The gang tries finding help at the nearest cabin. Joey, let's make some wake-up juice. This movie doesn't even try putting on a day-for-night filter. It assumes the audience is so stupid that they wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the moonlight and three in the afternoon. Just a few miles from here, there's a forest ranger's cabin. They've got a radio. Then what are we waiting for? Not now. You'll have to wait for daylight. Considering the fog, either way, you're going to end up driving off a cliff. Tommy, meanwhile, has taken one of the eggs so he can raise it himself. No, that's not what the alien wants. It wants to be in a more interesting movie where people are dying. Before too long, the alien hatches, and <laughs> thank God he didn't get the kids' looks. However, another alien is wandering through the woods with a much less E.T. rip-off-y attitude. What on earth is that? I know what it is. It's that thing from the cover of Turkish E.T. Sure is a strange bird. Think it could be worth something? Well, maybe not as much as the big mix, but we can take a shot. If this scene goes on too long, the movie might get something higher than a PG rating. <gasps> Boy, 
Daddy, how you've grown! They grow up so fast. One minute they're a snot rocket, the next they're baked and eating cereal. The movie's getting a little too kid-friendly on me. Nothing that another corpse can't solve. Wait, that's too dark? Okay, um, have our monster play with animals. I know he wants to eat them, but he can only look at them seductively. <laughs> Aw, oh, come on! He just wanted to tell you to return the Golden Ninja Warrior! Tommy names the alien Trumpy, probably because phallic-y seemed like a bad idea. That's a lot of nuts! You know, upon closer inspection, I think this is the kid's bedroom from the beginning of Pieces. Look, there's even a jigsaw puzzle, which Trumpy puts together a bit more wholesomely than Edmund Perdom did. <laughs> Why was that cut from the MST3K version? At least now Trumpy doesn't have to go around killing college students. Ah, that's cheating. You must teach me one day. You want him to teach you how to cheat? Tommy is trying to teach him about Earth, and there's no better way to start than with a puzzle and a Simon machine. <laughs> I liked Trumpy's Space Simon song before it became popular. And just in case you're totally convinced that this is now a kid's movie... Well, that's it. What a fuck up this Back to Nature crap is. I see Tommy is drawing his favorite dancer at Chippendales. That's my mommy. Oh, it's your mom? Obviously, because your mom is a dead ringer for Prince Adam. Trumpy can do other great things too, like give the kid a closer view of the Mondo Kane films. At least he's not showing him Nuki with a bunch of talking monkeys. Careful with that bright light in your eyes, Trumpy. You'll cause the entire room to have a seizure. This would be much more impressive if a film student made it and it were made out of clay. Enough of that. What's going on in the more interesting murder plot? Why are you carrying this rifle, then? Well, if that friend of yours, Laura, had carried one, he'd still be alive. Yeah, she'd just be missing some toes after shooting herself in the foot. Much like this chick. What a weekend. It's a great place. So peaceful. So quiet. Ha! Did she realize halfway through that line that she was supposed to sound condescending? Uh oh, Tommy's out of his room. Kid, what are you doing? You're accidentally drifting into the horror film. Give it time and the music from Maniac will start playing. There's nothing to be scared of. He just found the constellation Dits. You know, if this movie script wasn't raped by E.T.'s exploitation, it wouldn't be that bad of a slasher film. But because they have to keep the violence down, we have a character getting killed by a sprained ankle. The people here are certainly as smart as slasher movie characters. You're a good cook, Tracy. It's unusual with girls today. In the 80s, girls are awesome at making fruit roll-ups and pop rocks. But you're very intelligent. Yeah, I don't know what frightens the guys more, my face or my intelligence. It's your acting. Good thing the phone is easy to spot. It's right next to the chess set made of empty glasses. Tommy still doesn't know where Trumpy is, but he sees the second alien giving the girl the acting lessons she deserves. Maybe he's regretting giving Trumpy those PCP-laced peanuts. So is it still nighttime, or am I to believe we're at 2 in the morning? I don't think Tommy is going to find Trumpy, but he might find the opening shot from Evil Dead. He should count himself lucky. He got out of the house as the men start shooting at each other for no reason. Mommy, open the door. Let me in. It's Tommy. Yes, let's bring him inside where the bullets are flying. Wake up, Kathy. Oh, what's going on? I don't know. I heard a shot. A shot? You must have been dreaming. Wake up! Really? A dream? There are aliens trying to kill you, and you're having a hard time believing that a shot was fired? Hey, look, Trumpy used another one of his powers. He made the sky dark. You're naughty, Trumpy. Very naughty. No, I've seen naughty ETs. Trumpy is just juvenile. <laughs> Remember when you shot at me a few minutes ago? <laughs> that was funny. Tommy dresses Trumpy up, and he looks like John Holmes doing a handstand in a coat. 
Chubby hides out while the others assemble to kill the evil alien. Isn't it better to wait till I morning? I tell you, Molly, now is the time to finish it off. We'll give it five minutes and it'll be a different time of day outside anyway. I guess Trumpy couldn't resist the fine smell of Jack Daniels whiskey and gunpowder, so he shows himself. Tommy, get away from it! No, you can't shoot him or we won't be able to use the same costume for both aliens. I like how Tommy claims that all the aliens want to do is be our friends and that we shouldn't hurt them, but as soon as he spots the evil alien, he grabs for a weapon. Still doesn't stop him from wanting to help. Get out of the way, Tommy! Get out of the way! No, don't hurt them, please! Good work, kid. You're about to get your uncle killed. <laughs> Since he was able to withstand bullets this entire movie, turns out his one weakness is more bullets. That was actually an impressive effect. This movie ends rather depressingly. Tommy has to say goodbye to Trumpy so the other adults won't kill him. So instead of just telling him the truth, he screams at him and tells him that he hates him. Go away, Trumpy. I hate you. Go away. We're not friends anymore. Go away. <laughs> nice to see Sam Witwicky's childhood video. The others leave all smiley, ah, happy, our friends and family members are dead. Then Trumpy is left in the woods alone and wanders off by himself with no way home and not a friend in sight. This is a sad ending. And it's even more sad when we don't have the galaxy invader footage at the end to cheer us up. You may laugh at me for ending the week on Pod People, but guess what? This was the best of the E.T. ripoffs I watched. With Pod People, basically what we're looking at is a lot of producer interference. The movie was intended to be a slasher film about evil aliens, and that's what it looks like. And for the most part, that's what it feels like. But the producer stepped in and ordered it to have elements of Spielberg's E.T., no matter how out of place it was. If you want my honest opinion about the movie... There are things about it I like. I always liked the dark, dreary, almost sweaty feeling of the woods. It's kind of medieval-esque in a way, and the greasy grain of the film stock adds to the horror movie atmosphere. Rarely have I seen the woods look this horrifically dreadful and swampy. The aliens are memorable, and there are effects here that are slightly ambitious. I'm a fan of the movie's director as well. The song is also catchy, proving that in the 80s, even the bad songs have a hook. If you take out the kid element and add some more gore, it wouldn't be the best slasher film on the planet, but it would certainly be less schizophrenic. And it'd take a movie that's already kind of entertaining and make it the true horror film it was meant to be. But I'm a cinema snob, so oh, this movie has a 1.8 on IMDb. It must be one of the worst movies ever. So is not one of the worst movies ever. It only has a 1.8 because it was on MST3K. Thus ends ZT Week. Thanks for joining me on my 150th episode anniversary spectacular. Which by now brings us to uh, 154 episodes, I believe. I'm going to go sneak out of the house now while this montage plays. Shh. With a big old kicker to It stinks!